Welcome again. Right now, we're on Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 32, and it's talking about atheism and homosexuality. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time ever, we are reading through the Bible. We are going through everything word for word. We want the truth. It's not about what we think, what we, you know, our own opinions, what we feel. You know, we want the truth. We want to serve God and not ourselves. Jesus said, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. That means death to self. That means complete self-sacrifice. Sacrificing all of your pride, your lust, everything, okay? That's what Jesus called us to do. That, my friend, is Bible. And that's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to read. Let's get into it. For the wrath of God, the anger, the vengeance, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. That's what's going on, you know. People who are living in unrighteousness, they want to suppress the truth silence them get them out of the way instead of being reasonable they just are like animals the word righteousness by the way means to be right it's a, it's the state of being right okay righteousness and unrighteousness is the state of being in error simply stated it's the state of being wrong unrighteousness is wrong for example in unrighteous life it is a sinful life but Paul starts out here by saying, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And don't forget, this is, quote unquote, New Testament. Because that which is known of God is revealed in them, for God revealed it to them. For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. In other words, it's all right there in front of you. I mean, I've read that there's more chance that a typhoon can whip through a junkyard and construct a Boeing 747 than there is for just absolutely nothing to cause a big bang and all of a sudden your great 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 grandfather slime ball climbs out of the sea and something as complex as just a simple human eyeball or DNA, the program of life just comes from nowhere. God made it clearly visible. But as it was once said by a great man of God, atheism is not about intellectualism. Atheism is about morality. There's something in that person's life that is against the moral standard of God. That's why they fight against it so heavy. Verse 21, because knowing God, they didn't glorify him as God and didn't give thanks, but became vain in their reasoning, vain in their reasoning. You see, there's a lot of people out there. They do not go by reason at all. They go by feeling. They go by their own pride. They go by their own judgment, regardless of how wise or how foolish that may be. There's no real good reasoning and debate with these people. They just get angry and they would just shout and chant just like robots, you know. Their program is just to get pushy or to get violent, just to go irate. Their program is just to flip out if you say something that they don't like. Instead of actually having a humane debate, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless heart was darkened. Their senseless heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. You can have lots of knowledge, but have absolutely no wisdom. You can know a lot of information. You can have a lot of data stored, but be as foolish as foolish can be at the same time. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools 
and traded the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness of an image of corruptible man and of birds, four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to uncleanness, that their bodies should be dishonored among themselves. If you persist in lust and uncleanness, God will give you up to it. God will just throw up his hands and say, if that's the way you want to be, I'm out of here. See you later. You confess my name, but you don't live the life. You confess my name, but you don't live my ways. You don't go by my character. You don't live by my laws. I give you up to the lusts of your heart, to uncleanness, to dishonor your own bodies, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, again, we see this, God gave them up to vile passions. Is it love? Well, it's love to, it's loving something, but God says vile passions. For their women changed the natural function into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural function of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another. Men doing what is inappropriate with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. This is Bible. This is Bible. Pure and clean. This is New Testament. This is the Apostle of Grace, Paul speaking here. Even as they refused to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up. Again, this is a third time. God gave them up to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness. What's covetousness? It's just yearning and desiring for, for material things or fleshly things for someone else or something else that's not spiritual, that's not God. It's lust, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil habits, secret slanderers, backbiters, hateful to God, hateful to God, insolent, okay? So th they have their love. Oh yes, they have their love. They call it love. But it's hypocrisy because they hate the people who don't like all. The, all someone's got to do is just say they don't like it, or say it's a, you know they're sinning or they're doing something wrong, and they say that they're they're the people that's hating. But the Bible says, okay, the Apostle Paul who had more influence than any celebrity alive today or any politician alive today, the Apostle Paul said that these people are hateful to God. Haters, they are. Insolent, arrogant. There's the pride, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Oh yes, oh yes. Disobedient to parents without understanding Covenant breakers without natural affection. Unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the ordinance of God. Ordinance here meaning law of God. You know, we read it in the book of Leviticus. Those are the ordinances of God. Read Psalm 119, all about the law of God, judgments of God, ordinances of God, statutes of God. It's all part of the same package. It's the Torah that those who practice such things are worthy of death. Where does Paul get this from? Well, it's from the ordinance of God. And I'll say it again. You know, we are reading the Bible here. We are reading a book that is in most people's homes in North America as we speak. We are reading the New Testament written by the Apostle of Grace, Paul. 
And he said, who, knowing the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. This is a very, very serious order by the apostle Paul. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, we don't go by the law no more. We don't go, we just go by grace. We go by faith. Uh, excuse me? Paul writes a lot against all kinds of sins. And we're going to get into it here. We're going to go through the letters of Paul. We're going to talk about it all. We're going to talk about everything here, okay? So it is going to be awesome. Seek God with all your heart. That's all your heart, okay? Everything that's within you, seek God. As I said before, Jesus called us to sacrifice ourselves. Basically saying no to our own lusts, to our own desires, to our own will, and saying yes to God's will. Just how Jesus said, not my will, Father, but yours be done. It says in humility, he humbled himself to obedience to die on the cross. And we need to do the same. We need to humble ourselves, expunge all the arrogance, expunge all the pride, and humble ourselves to obedience of God, even to denying ourselves wholly and completely. It's about laying everything down. It's about seeking God, doing it God's way, not your way. Call upon God, as it says in Jeremiah. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.